right, so in previous videos, we saw how we could use uh, double integrals to evaluate the expression e to the power of minus alpha um, x squared dx. And that gave us the following results. And then we saw how to evaluate integrals for expressions such as e to the power of minus alpha is x squared plus beta x plus gamma dx. And we saw that that gave us the following results. So it was pi on alpha e to the power of beta squared over 4 alpha plus gamma. And then with these two results, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at what we can do with integrals of the form x to the power of some x to some power times e to the minus alpha x squared because I think that this is a really interesting case to look at and we're going to use a, a technique called differentiation under the integral sign so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first one e to the minus alpha x squared dx and we already know the result we know that this is pi on alpha and what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this expression but Remember, we want to differentiate both sides. So in order to do that, we need to select a variable that we want to uh, differentiate with respect to. This here is just a constant, but we can treat alpha as a variable so that if we differentiate this with respect to alpha and this with respect to alpha, then what do you think we're going to get? Well, on this side, we're going to get minus x squared times e to the minus alpha x squared dx. And on this side, we should get minus 1 on 2, pi to the power of 1 over 2, and then alpha half minus, sorry, minus half minus 1, that's 3 on 2, and it's still in the denominator. And obviously, these two symbols will cancel out. So in the end, what we, what we would end up with is the following expression. we would end up with the following expression, so we would get uh, that one can just go away. And you can see that without even having to integrate anything, we just found out the value of this definite integral just by using this little trick of differentiating with respect to a parameter or, or a constant in this case. Now what happens when we differentiate this again with respect to the same? Well, in this case, we're going to get x on 4 e to the minus alpha x squared dx. And I'm going to ignore the negative sign because we already know that because this is a negative uh, power here. That's just the negative sign is always going to cancel out no matter how, how many times we differentiate this. So in the end, we're going to have um, this 3 over 2 is going to come down. So that's 3 on 4 alpha 5 on 2 because remember we have to add 1 to that. And then pi half. And we can essentially keep going with this. So, so you can hopefully see that a pattern begins to emerge for um, all these different expressions. If, if we differentiate this again, we're going to get the following. So we're going to get 5 times 3, that's 15. And then over 8, alpha 7 on 2. And pi remains the same all through God. So we, uh, we are just evaluating these things just by differentiating with respect to that parameter alpha. And we could do a similar thing for all the odd powers. So here we have just been considering the even powers, but we can do some a similar thing for the odd powers as well to get expressions that are very general. Uh, I, I just wanted to make this video short just to show you some of the applications of this formula and, uh, and of this result that we got in the first in the first video about Gaussian integrals and, and why it is so important. Not, not just in mathematics, but in physics as well, and some branches of science where this appears quite a lot. So this trick is really a really nice trick. So we can use it with definite integrals for which we know a result. So it's, it's a really interesting thing to look at. Now, before moving on to um, further topics, uh, what I wanted to get to is what else can we use this for? So there are a couple of things that we can use this for, and, and I'm going to show you right here. So the first thing that we can do is evaluate an integral of the form minus infinity to infinity of cosine x squared, or actually, should I say, some constant alpha x squared. 
Now, how would we go about integrating this? Because remember, we cannot really integrate this because by the chain rule, we would need to have the derivative of the inside outside if we wanted to use integration by substitution. And certainly integration by parts wouldn't really be um, a very nice thing to do here because obviously we cannot really integrate this to, to begin with. Um, we could differentiate it, but then it would give us a higher power and so on. So, so it wouldn't really yield any nice results. So what we can do instead, and, and just let's consider the following integral as well, because we are always interested in both sine and cosine o of a function. Can you think of any function that would relate exponentials to, to these two functions? And yes, we can think of the following function. So if we remember the Euler identity from complex numbers, we can say that this is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. So we can obviously relate this by the real part and the imaginary part of this complex number. So if we wanted to have this expression as the argument, then what we would do is we would write alpha x squared, and then this would come out as cosine alpha x squared plus i sine of alpha x squared. So what we can do now is we can see, well, if we integrate this, what will we get? Let's integrate this particular function, but instead of making it, let's make it negative such that here we can actually solve for it. Because remember that the value that we derive for this integral is only for the Gaussian function. The Gaussian function is a negative exponential only. So we're going to have this. And what's this going to be? Well, we know that the constant here is just i times alpha. So that's not very hard to work with, actually, in fact it's just going to be pi on i alpha. And then how do we actually get rid of that i? How do we separate it into these two results? Well, what we can do is we can take the complex number i. We know that the, it is going to lie here along the imaginary axis on the complex plane. So it's going to have an angle of pi on 2. And then it's just going to have magnitude of 1. So we can say that the complex number i square root, because remember it's under the square root sign, is going to be equal to the following polar form, which is i to pi on 2 squared, which becomes e to the power of i pi on 4. But remember here we're dividing by that, so this is going to come out as pi on alpha e to the minus i pi on 4. And hopefully you can see where this is going because now we can decompose that exponential into cosine and sine function. And then the real and the imaginary parts can be used to relate back to these functions. So we're going to get the following. Pi on alpha, this is going to be equal to, by evaluating the expressions uh, directly, minus i square root of 2 on 2 and then in the end we're going to get 2 pi that minus i 2 pi so it's going to be the same value for both both expressions really but the really interesting thing is that knowing this and knowing the fact that this decomposes into that we can actually write the following results So we're going to have cosine of alpha x squared dx equals to the integral minus infinity to infinity of sine. And both of them are going to be equal to the value 2 pi, so square root of 2 pi over 2 times square root of alpha. So that's a really, really interesting result because we just solved two integrals that we thought we couldn't actually solve analytically and we found an exact value based on this simple Gaussian integral so that's a really nice thing that we can apply as well and this is something that might work for higher powers of x but in general this is a really interesting application of Gaussian integrals to solving definite integrals that may seem like they cannot be solved analytically but here we just found this without, act without actually having to integrate these two functions so this is just a really nice trick to perform 
and I'm just going to end finish Gaussian integrals for now and then in the following videos we're just going to focus on more multiple integrals.